was started as a bedtime story for our two daughters. So originally it was called Disney's Halloween House. Tis time! And my wife said, you should do something with this. So we pitched it, we did this big elaborate table set. Jeffrey Katzenberg was coming into a uh, meeting room and I had asked if I could get there half an hour before. And then on the table spread across, my wife had bought about 25 pounds of candy corn. They smelled October 31st, they smelled Halloween. Disney contacted me and, uh, and asked if I would come in to meet with Jeffrey Katzenberg and, and, and I was invited to direct uh, Newsies. Kenny had done Newsies for Disney. He and I met and, and he's somebody you just fall in love with. The casting process, um, there were uh, there were several auditions. Of course, I was only ten, so everybody's reading, you know, for me. Basically, just hearing the entire premise and then reading the script, I was like, please, 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 you know, sign me up, get me on board. There was talk originally for Max of Leonardo DiCaprio being Max, and that was exciting because here was this young, cute kid, and how exciting that was the idea that maybe this kid that had just done Gilbert Grape would be would be doing this film. He turned it down. Who are you? Max, you just moved here. Going to Salem to research the film was eye-opening. A lot of the running, running, you know, initially running through the forest and coming, you know, sliding down the hill and all that, that was all done in Salem. Max's house was a real house in Marblehead, Massachusetts, and then we built the interiors on sound stages in Burbanks. So they had built in one enormous stage this incredible set. Kenny Ortega, who was a choreographer turned director, brought this great musical musicality to it. I think that for me, um, as a choreographer, I'm always looking for the rhythm in everything. And whether it's music driven or not, or whether it's a break into song moment or not, I'm always just looking for the rhythm, the timing in everything. You know, with Bette and Cappy and, and Sarah just on wires that looked really thin to me. And my character has one or two brief, brief moments where she's up on the broom with them. And for that, you know, I felt very special because I was the only one of the other kids that ever got to do some of the flying stunts. Thora Birch, one of the brightest young children that, to this day that I've ever worked with. I mean, she was so ahead of the class. Thora, I remember as, as you know, 10 going on 40, she was just the smartest little girl I'd ever met. You freed me, Danny. Thank you. I always wish that Sean had been around because it's Sean Murray, he played in, in, in real boy form. What, I've, what I discovered was that cats are impossible to train. You can't train cats. I think we went twice as long in the movie as we were supposed to because of these cats. Thackeray himself, uh, there are some moments where there are some animatronics, but for the most part, Thackeray is, is a real cat with some computer work. My children will take care of you too. And their children after that. And theirs after that. Now, I've got kids coming up to me now that have seen the movie because their parents who were who were kids and saw the movie when they were young, they're showing it to their kids now. I don't think that, that people back then had the confidence that it would find an audience and have the legacy that it does today. Uh, it originally was not that successful, but it, 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 it grew and morphed and the audience, you know, built. Just the other night I went to the movies. I was walking out of the movie theater. This young college girl yelled at me, Mr. Ortega, and I turned around and she goes, thank you for Hocus Pocus. You know, and I looked at her and I knew she wasn't born, not even close, you know, when the movie came out. To know that you've been involved with a group of people who created something that has put a, a, a significant tattoo on, on the hearts of a wide number of people is kind of amazing. I, I know they're working on a script right now for a Hocus Pocus 2. I think it's endured because it touches something in people about Halloween. You know, it's not all about the candy. It's not all about, you know, making people up and soaping houses and throwing toilet paper. I think the legacy of Hocus Pocus, that it is it's a, it is a film trapped in time. I mean, I, I still try to understand, as, as you say, the legacy of this. Um, I still try to understand that because it's thrilling and, and wonderfully shocking to me.